On today's show, Dennis Feltkin is here with his wife and family, and he's going to tell us what his life is like off camera. And on Soap Talk, Barbara Holmes is going to talk with Jack Rambo, better known as Steve Jacoby on All My Children. And we met Barry Manilow backstage at the St. Paul Civic Center, and he told us all about how he handles success. All that just ahead on Good Company. From the Twin Cities, it's Good Company. With your hosts, Steve Edelman and Sharon Anderson. With roving reporter Gary Lumpkin and the Good Company Company. group here today. Uh, good Friday group. Yes. We have good Welcome. news for you. Welcome. We have good news for you too. If you join us in our live studio audience starting today, you have an opportunity to win two free tickets to anywhere in the continental United States. Wow. Courtesy of Republic Airlines. Did you know that? You knew that's why they're here. That's right. <laughs> we'll tell you more about that later in the show. It was a couple of weeks ago, as you may remember, that Barry Manilow, the singing star, was here at the St. Paul Civic Center. And I went there and talked with him. And what was it like when you first met him? You never met him before, had you? No, I hadn't. No. I'd only, you know, heard about him and read about him. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, Barry Manilow has this large entourage of people. Oh, really? That travels with him, yeah. And so here I was at the Civic Center about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and all of a sudden there was an announcement that Barry Manilow is here. Next thing you know, everybody disappeared from the Civic Center because they were told ahead of time that when Barry does an interview, he does not want to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. So everybody disappeared. All the people that were working on the stage to set up the show left. It's a very interesting situation. Now, let's take a look at that right now. This is Barry Manilow doing his very popular hit at the Copacabana. And there we are at the Civic Center prior to the show, and I asked Barry about his success. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of press about you, and you've given a lot of interviews. And one of the impressions that we're getting is that you're saying that you personally have changed a lot in the last couple of years. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah. How so? I think I've become more um, in control of my life and in my career. In the beginning, uh, which was about seven years ago when this whole thing hit, I think I was out of control only because I didn't know. Well, you know, you don't, you don't, how can predict? Who can, who can possibly predict sure. that this kind of thing will happen? When this, when this success hits like the hurricane that it did, you've got to be very strong and you have to have your feet planted firmly on the ground or else you get blown over. Um, and luckily I did because when the success hit, I was about 28. And so I was pretty solid, but even as solid as I was, I was not prepared for the number one records in a row and all of the acclaim and all of the awards that kept, kept hitting me right. I didn't know which, which to thank, who to thank first. I was accepting gold records and Emmys and things. You know. And you can really lose it. You mm. can lose touch with reality. And um, what brought you back? Um, I think the people around me brought me back. Not that I did anything that I'm sorry about. I think I think I was a little more temperamental. I think I was. It was just it was just scared. I just didn't know where I was. Um, I think the people around me did it. I think um, uh, meeting uh, meeting all the, the professionals that I that I eventually wound up meeting and working with mm -hmm. finally brought me back down uh, to the fact that it's just a job and. Uh, I just wanted to do my job as best as I could and not to be mm -hmm. that um, uh, concerned about all of the outside stuff that happens when you get this high up because it really can knock you right over. What do you like best about yourself? Um, I think I'm proudest of the fact that I'm uh, uh, a professional. I like to consider myself a pro. Um, I like that part. I think uh, I think I I get respect from people because of that. I, I, I feel that I'm organized and I, uh, uh, and I think I'm a, a good boss. Good boss? Yeah. How so? Well, from what I hear from the people that work for me, they like working for me. Because you care? Because I care a lot about them and I care a lot about the music and I care a lot about what my image is. It's all very important to me. When you hear the song Mandy, does that have a real significance for you? Well. 
I still, I still get a little pang when I hear Mandy because it was the first. And I still, you know what I look for? I, I look to find out if, if it, if my voice has changed or if, um, if the sound of the records have changed that much. You know, because I, I don't know. I'm waiting for the day where, you know, when you hear Sinatra's old records, he sounds like a little kid, and then you hear him now, and he uh -huh. sounds like an older, older guy. I'm waiting to hear the big change. I don't hear that much of a change on. That. Listen to that crowd. Oh, yeah. That's a great song, isn't it? It Mandy? is. It's beautiful. And the people at the concert went nuts yeah. when you sang it. What did you think of, the, of Barry Manilow, other than what we saw? Well, you know, the one impression that you probably really didn't receive in watching that interview was how really sensitive I think he is. I mean... Sensitive? Yeah, he's sensitive. He is... Um, I hate to use the word paranoid, but I think he's a little bit paranoid that people are going to take advantage of him. Oh. Um, he, uh, there was a review that came out, I think, in the Minneapolis paper before he did his concert. And that review said, here comes Barry Manilow. And it was very negative. It said, oh, you know, he's really a great songwriter, but he has not, not a very good voice and all these negative things. And I am sure that Manilow read that review before he sat down to do the interview with us. Oh, great. Because um, we talked a little beforehand, and you could just tell by somebody's body posture, you know, that he was kind of very, uh, very um, skeptical. Uh -huh. And when I asked him some questions that you didn't see, he, he kind of said, well, what do you mean by that? Like and as if you were trying to catch him on something? Yeah, or accuse really. him of something? Or? And I think the reason is because he is a very, very sensitive guy. That's why he's so successful. Mm -hmm. Because he can write all those lyrics that we can relate to. Yes. And, when, and he sings. You look into his eyes and you can see how sensitive he is. I mean, almost he's almost dewy-eyed, you know? And I think maybe being that sensitive has hurt him because the press, especially the musical press, loves to take on Barry Manilow and say he sells a lot of records, but artistically, he's not really great. Mm. And so it's that sensitivity and that mm -hmm. kind of... Um, Oh, you know, that quality he has of being uh, skeptical that I found really interesting. Mm -hmm. I maybe, mean, he's on top. Maybe he's too popular. Maybe that's the problem. Hmm. People, know. you know, want to find the chinks. You know, they want to say, oh, he's not that great. Yeah. Bring him down. Interesting guy. Yeah. When we come back, we're going to show you some of the things that are playing in the Twin Cities this weekend that you might want to go see right after this. Village. I'm Clarence Birdseye. Meet Scotty, the new firehouse cook. Now the fire's under me to brighten up the guy's meals. Any ideas? Sure. One of my new Birdseye cheese sauce combinations. Wow. Oh, they love this sauce. Rich and cheesy over my best vegetables. How about a cheer for our new cook? And these terrific vegetables and cheese sauce. All right. <laughs> now, three new Birdseye cheese sauce combinations. Thanks, Clarence. For a taste you'll be proud of, come to Birdseye. Katie, what have you done to my house? What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing's wrong. It's never smelled this clean before. That's the pine saw signal. That fresh scent tells the world your house is more than clean. How come? Pine saw does more than just clean. Pine saw cleaner disinfectant cuts through grease, kills household germs and odors, and leaves a fresh scent that shows you've cleaned the grease and killed the germs. The pine saw signal tells the world your house is more than clean. Mmm, something smells good. Ooh. Oh, you made coffee. Yeah, and it tastes great. Of course. It's Maxwell House Master Glam. Mm. Isn't that supposed to save us money? Mm-hmm. It only tastes expensive. Master Blend, a special blend of 100% coffee. We make a special way so you can save money. Master Blend, it only tastes expensive. Introducing Grandma's Cookies. Fancy, this time you have really knocked my socks off. I mean, making your own fresh chocolate sandwich cookies. I never heard of such a thing. Look at them rich, creamy insides. And them crispy little wafers. Mm -hmm. And they're all so perfect. Mm -hmm. Bessie, I don't mean to be unkind, but you've always been a little uneven in your work. A whole new me. New Grandma's Cookies taste suspiciously close to homemade. It's Friday and time for our Now Playing feature where every week we go to uh, new films and movies and musical events that are going on around the Twin Cities and give you a little preview so you can decide what you'd like to do over the weekend. 
First of all, there are a couple of new movies that have opened recently in the Twin Cities, and we're going to take a look first at one that's a kind of off-the-wall comedy that's a lot like the Animal House that was around a few years ago. It's called The National Lampoon's Class Reunion. And as the title suggests, it takes us to a class reunion. This is a 10-year class reunion of the class of 72. Now, what's interesting about this movie is not necessarily the dialogue or the plot. Mostly, it's the characters. Because the typical characters you're going to see in this, uh, the typical jock, the beauty queen, the class nerd, all those kind of people that we all had in our own schools. Now, as we take a look at a clip from the National Lampoon's class reunion, you'll probably be able to pick out a few of those types that you had in your own school. We'll just improvise a name tag, huh? Isn't that awful? We just ran out. Isn't that the way it always is, huh? Listen, have a super time. I have a kind of fun idea. Why don't we sing a song? Feminist, weirdo, virgin. Who told you that? Everybody, everybody, oh, everybody. Can't you stop? stop in the name of Can we see your naked before you kill her? Ah! Oh, the food's ready. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Come on, Anita, go. You kids look like you haven't had a good cafeteria meal in here. Oh. <laughs> now, you've been to a class reunion recently. Anything like that? It's exactly like that. <laughs> I was drawing on their codes. I want you guys such a good time. But you haven't been to yours. No, I haven't. I don't think mine will be like that either. I don't know if there is such a class reunion like that. It looks absolutely insane. I have read some reviews of it. It's really mixed. They say if you're in a really zany mood and you love the National Lampoon type stuff, you'll like this movie. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it is the National Lampoon's class reunion. It's rated R and it's playing right now in the Twin Cities. There's another movie that's playing here in, uh, in the cities, which started, I think, about a week ago, and it's Sylvester Salo uh, Stallone's latest. You know, he did all the Rocky films. This particular one is called First Blood, and it's a story of a Vietnam veteran who was trained to be a Green Beret, comes back to the United States, and really has a great deal of trouble adjusting to civilian life. Now, in this scene that we're about to see from the movie, Stallone's commanding officer, who is played by Richard Crenna, enters a police station where Stallone has holed himself up. Krenna attempts to convince him to give himself up while Stallone examines how he really feels about it. Here's the scene. By the way, that's rated R, and I understand the reason it's rated R is because there's a lot of violence in that movie. It's called First Blood, and it stars Sylvester Stallone. If you're in the mood for something a little lighter and for some live entertainment, there is a local comedian in town who is, uh, he, has a, he has a big following. His name is Jeff Cesario, and he really is very good. He's performing at the Comedy Gallery. You might recognize him from Dudley Riggs' comedy, All-Stars. He was a part of that group for a while. He's originally from Wisconsin. Now he makes his home in the Twin Cities, although he's performed in clubs all over the country. And his subjects for comedy are sports and music and growing up in the city and just about anything else that comes from his own experience. Let's take a look right now at Jeff on stage at the Comedy Gallery with his views on rock and roll. Now, I grew up on jazz. So I had to learn to like rock and roll, but I like it because they break all the rules in rock and roll. Everyone, man, you got a ticket to a rock and roll concert. It says right on a ticket, the concert's going to start at 9 o'clock. When does it start? 10.30. And nobody in the crowd seems to mind. It just gives them more time to do drugs and drink beer. <laughs> and all the band has to do to get off the hook for being an hour and a half late is come out and say one thing. Oh, he's funny. He, he is funny. We saw him a couple weeks ago, and uh, he, he's a wonderful actor. I think that's what makes him so good on stage. He acts out his comedy, and he really is fun to watch, and good subject matter also. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to take a look at his show, it's Jeff Cesario. He's playing at the Comedy Gallery, which is a small room upstairs at uh, JR's restaurant in downtown Minneapolis. Call 338-2424 for reservations and more information. When we come back, Dennis Felkin is here, and he's here with his wife and family, and we're going to find out what life is like for him when he isn't doing the weather. 
Monday on Good Company, Sharon and I take a ride on the supersonic Concorde to Paris, traveling at twice the speed of sound to begin our European adventure. Also, our bargain hunter Vicky Audette will take us to a discount grocery store to show us ways to stretch our holiday food dollars. Coming up next, the personal side of Dennis Feltkin. He's here with his wife and family. Stay with us. They've made shirts in Troy, New York since 1868. Back then, when you cleaned their shirts, they said boil them. Today, the Aero Company has better advice. All temperature cheer. They sew it inside every shirt, from dirty collars to messy cuffs. Cheer clean shirts in the right temperature to help them look great. And after 114 years, they should know. All temperature cheer. Arrow sews cheer's name in. They trust our cleaning. When you shop the country store, the low price food leader, you'll find all of your food needs for a lot less. Not just a few ad specials or a few coupons, but everything on special every day, week after week. A full line of meat and produce, quality products store-wide, large displays of exceptional buys, and 15 convenient locations. Shop and see. We bet you the country store will offer you an unbeatable value that will keep you coming back again and again. And if I hadn't had this test, I hate to think of what kind of a condition I would be in now if I were still alive. That test can detect early signs of intestinal cancer, a disease that needlessly kills 60,000 people every year. This is Dr. Michael Breen. Channel 5 has teamed up with Snyder Drug and Abbott Northwestern Hospital to offer that test to you free of charge. Watch The Cancer Nobody Talks About, starting Tuesday at 10 on the Eyewitness News Update. This is long-lasting moisturizing from Lubriderm, an extraordinary hand and body treatment created for dermatologists. Lubriderm drenches dry skin with six emollients, so rich, so penetrating that with continued use, its moisturizing benefits last, even if you skip a day. So your hands, your body always feels soft and smooth, never dry. Long-lasting moisturizing with Lubriderm. It's what your skin has been thirsting for. Lubriderm. It was about five years ago that we first met Dennis Felkin, meteorologist for KSTP's Eyewitness News, and his wife, Sheila. Now, the noise you're hearing is what has happened in that five years. Because since then, Dennis and Sheila have had three children, and they're all with us today. We have Dennis, we have Sheila, we have their twin sons, identical twins, by the way, David and Jonathan, and we have three-month-old Daryl. Would you please welcome the Felkin family? Well, how's life as new parents? Oh. <laughs> life at the zoo? <laughs> I've forgotten what an eight-hour a night's sleep is like. Really? Yeah. Well, Those this is such kids. a dramatic change for you. I mean, when you came here to uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul, you had no children. Right. And now, you have quite a brood here. Yeah, it's the cold weather. <laughs> 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 Are you both from, from Florida? Did you both grow up in Florida, rather? No, we met in Atlanta. You met in Atlanta? Yeah. Blind day. Really? <laughs> sure did, from a friend. And well. your first impression was? Well, back then, he was a little chubbier and wore glasses. <laughs> and I was told, he's nice, he's got a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> and your impression? Well, uh... I liked what I saw right off, but uh, the guy who was setting me up, uh, I kept saying, what's she like, what's she like? And he said, she's nice, you'll like her. What's she like? She's nice, great personality. What's she look like? She's nice. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. He was right. <laughs> Dennis, you know what I heard? I heard from a uh, secret source that we won't call Deep Throat. I heard that you are a absolutely meticulously organized person. True. Who really, really cares a lot about two things family, and the weather. And that takes up your whole life. Is that true? That's about it. That is about it. I don't have a whole lot of time for other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but weather has been my hobby as far back as I can remember. And obviously, uh, children and family have taken over a, a, a lot of that now, too. Do you have a, a, a kind of a role in the, in the family, and, and Sheila has some other role? You know, kind of a traditional type of situation? Oh, he shares so much, it's almost equal. And he has, well, he has to. 
with the bottle feeding and whatnot, he, you know, I can't see both of them at one time, so it was, Dad has to. It was, you know, it was a blessing in disguise. Well, how can you do that with his schedule? Actually, it works out pretty well. The uh, working nights, I'm able to get them up in the morning, uh, get breakfast to them, which allows Sheila to sleep a little later in the morning, and I'm there till about 2.30 in the afternoon. And a couple of days a week, we have a, a neighbor girl come in and help Sheila in the afternoon. I come home for dinner, which uh, allows me to give him a bath, and we put him to bed, and everything's quiet at 7.30. Dennis, wait a minute, i got to hand it to you. Look at you. Can you tell what he's doing here? Oh, yeah, he's got this well, organized somehow. <laughs> Sheila and Dennis somehow are keeping this whole thing together when the kids don't want to be here. Now, you have a nickname, I understand, for the twins? Yeah, uh, these, are, these are my terrorist team. This is Search, This is Destroy. <laughs> But how was that? I know you were very devoted to career, um, to your job, before you had the children. Was it tough finding a place in your life and time in your no, life? No, it wasn't. Everybody? I think the advantage we had was waiting until we had been married at least five years before having children. Mm -hmm. uh, by then, our, uh, my career was settled in. Uh, uh, the marriage was uh, doing very well, and we were ready for children. And uh, we were ready for them. This, this was a, a planned birth. Is this table ready yes. for them? <laughs> Are you kidding? Excuse me, Gad. We paid about 400 for this table. Uh, <laughs> we better break that glass. Now, who's that? That's okay. David. This is David. That's David. And that's Jonathan? That's Jonathan. And they're identical twins? They're identical twins. <laughs> the only uh, difference that I go on is uh, Jonathan has a pound on David. Yeah. And uh, David has a little <laughs> freckle on the back of his head, which was great before he had a head of hair. Now it's a little tough. And that's it. After that, I'm lost. How about you, Sheila? Can you tell the difference? Oh, yeah. Their faces are different. Too. Really? Yeah. That's funny. We have a little tape of what uh, you all do at home. I'll only roll that now, and you can kind of narrate it for us as to what's going on. Okay. All right. Here it comes Watch now. Watch TV. <laughs> there it is. Ah, yes. The annual leaf-breaking expedition. These guys love leaves. In fact, when I'm giving them breakfast, if they're getting a little antsy, I'll just say, look at the leaves, and they'll both look out the window and, and want to go outside. I have found that they love to get inside a leaf pile. Do you work a lot around the house, Dennis? Do I do. Um, gardening has always been one of my hobbies, and with the kids, uh, it's a treat for me to be able to get outside and do it. But uh, I've always enjoyed it. That's your 400-acre ranch just outside of Shaska. Yeah. <laughs> we wish. <laughs> Actually, that's my neighbor's yard. I already have my leaves raked up. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, very yeah. meticulous. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was there catching the leaves as they were falling out of the tree. <laughs> that's what I heard about you then. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the less chaotic scene, and that's our newest addition, three months old. That's the hardest that. part is finding enough time for the new little one with these guys. Oh, there goes the coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> what you're not seeing is our $400 table is now worth approximately $2.50. It's on sale now. <laughs> going once, going twice. Right. Wait, now, Daryl is how old now? How many months? Three months. Three, Three months. months. Now, that, this, down, this is downstairs in the family room, and they have a little corner, which is all their own, and they climb the table. And uh, another one of my hobbies, which I haven't had a lot of time to do in the past year and a half, has been piano. How long have you been playing the piano? On and off for about the last 10 years, since high school. A classical? Uh, no, mostly pop. Hmm. What kinds of things can you play, for example? Since I've uh, been off it for the last year, probably just scales right now. Okay. But uh, I can play some classical. Yeah. Oh, and there they are. Yeah, <laughs> and they're learning okay. to play as well. <laughs> Are you going somewhere? I think this is great. The kids are, well, you notice we did get rid of the table because... <laughs> no, they got rid of the table. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Through the top of it. We'll tell you what, we're going to break away for just a moment. We're going to have the kids go to our little playroom, which is in the back, and we'll take some questions for the two of you, all right? Terrific. All set? Right back. So there we go. Protect your home by turning your lights on and off while you're away. With this Intermatic Cordless Timer, a Hank Hot One at just $4.49. And you'll bake perfectly this holiday season with this West Bend Teflon cookie sheet. It's got that great nonstick surface and it's only $2.99. And check this month's flyer for more great bargains during Hank's one-stop holiday shopping sale. you got a lot more going for you with Hank. At participating hardware Hank stores. With Hank.
Remember that nice, tidy bowl, man? Well, it's no more Mr. Nice Guy with Extra Strength Tidy Bowl DX3. Agent DX3 is the powerful triple action system that battles dirty rims to make routine brushing easier, fights ring buildup, and effectively attacks stains. Look for our specially featured low price at your local supermarket today. And try Tidy Bowl DX3, America's special agent for cleaning toilets. Elvis. They called him the king of rock and roll. Elvis. Women thought he was the sexiest man alive. Elvis. He was known as the world's greatest entertainer. Now, Albert Goldman reveals the unknown facts about Elvis. How he lived, loved, and the shocking truth of how he died. Elvis, an Avon paperback. I have a simple message for people who want to know exactly what goes into the foods they feed their families. Let me tell you what goes into Hollywood bread. Eight vegetable flours, including pumpkin, carrot, lettuce, and artichoke, blended with stone ground natural wheat. It's vitamin enriched. Now let me tell you what doesn't go into Hollywood bread. There's no sugar and no shortening, none. Sure, Hollywood bread costs a little more than most breads. The way we make it, it has to. We're back with Dennis and Sheila Felkin. Dennis, of course, our meteorologist for Eyewitness News. And we have some questions for both of you. All set? Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah. Where did you first get your start as an uh, anchorman? Uh, I first started in Atlanta as a staff meteorologist doing early morning weather. And I uh, did three years of that and got tired of getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And so I broke out and West, went down to West Palm Beach and started a weather operation down there, which was night work. And I was only there five months when KSTB said, come here, fella. And I've been here ever since. Did you ever go to school for broadcast or anything no, like I that? No, I didn't. Uh, everything I am doing in broadcasting, I've learned along the way. We have a bio tape of Dennis that we should probably roll right now, since I know people are really interested in your past. Let's take a look at Dennis Felkin from way back. Oh, boy. Tell us what we're seeing here. You're seeing me when I was probably about 10 or 11 months old. Somewhere in Downers Grove, Illinois, suburban Chicago. You look like your son, Daryl. No, I look more like Jonathan and David. Uh, Daryl looks like Sheila. There's my first horse. Gosh, I love that thing. <laughs> Until my two brothers came along and tore it apart. That was Christmas. Was that your whole family, three boys? Uh, three boys and a girl. Uh -huh. And uh, when we moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, when I was five, and that's me when I'm five years old, on the left, it's my brother Jimmy in the middle and my brother John on the right. And yes, I was an alder boy. Ah. Ah, yes. Everybody trusts an alder boy. That's me on the left, my brother Jimmy on the right, and my sister's first communion in the middle there. My sister has uh, three children, too. Her house is as chaotic as ours. Those are my parents. Uh, and this is uh, when I graduated grade school, oh. 1966. Where first are they living now? Uh, my mom passed away about six years ago. My dad is still in Fort Lauderdale. That is my first television job in Atlanta. My hair was longer, in the mid-70s style, and yes, I wore glasses then. And Lord only knows where I got that tie. <laughs> I think I stole it from somebody. This is wedding day, uh, December 13th, 1975. And uh, I guess that's you. Yeah. yeah. Where were the, where were the two of you young. married? We were married in Atlanta. Uh -huh. Looks like a rather formal wedding. It was. Uh, then after that, as I said, we moved down to West Palm Beach for a couple of months, broke out of Atlanta, and uh, longer hairstyles again. Notice the light clothing, though. Yes. And then we moved back up here and started the family, and I'm not sure if that's David or Jonathan getting a bath. And then I couldn't tell them apart at all. And uh, baths were always fun. Now Sheila does the baths, at least for Daryl. And uh, then uh, on August 1st, uh, we had this picture uh, taken when uh, Daryl came along at Midway Hospital. That's the whole family there. And that's, that's quite a picture. Is the family complete now? Family's complete. That's it, huh? This is it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here we are today, the motley looking group. We call the KSTP Weather Services. It's uh, easily the best weather organization I've mm -hmm. ever had the uh, privilege to work for. Can I ask you a quick question about sure. the weather? As we all know, WCCO has decided not to do much weather. 
I mean, it's, yes. they do it in like 20 seconds or whatever it is. What do you think of that? I think it's a mistake. Uh, I'm very proud of the way we do a weather program here. Uh, I think when a viewer watches our weather program, he comes away knowing what the weather is and why that's going to happen. And we do it in such a manner where the viewer is not bored by what we do, just has a clear understanding of uh, what's going to happen. Dennis, when you first went into the weather business in the 70s on television, it seemed that um, clowning around as a weatherman was, was in. That was the way to make it. Yeah, and, yeah. and especially the news, the meteorologists, or not necessarily a meteorologist, the weatherman was supposed to be good time and fun yeah. and a little zany. That's changing. You changed that, that image. That is definitely changing. It has changed dramatically in this market, and it is changing uh, across the country. Did you, you have to fight against that when you first started? Uh, we had to fight a little bit, but I think uh, what has happened is that the viewer has demanded a change. Weather has become uh, so prominent these last couple of years with the strong winters and the hot summers that uh, they want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone who knows what's going on is the meteorologist. Mm -hmm. Hence, you have meteorologists doing your weather today. And they want to take it seriously. They take it seriously, but they have lighter sides, too. I've fallen off the set. I've tripped over my cord. My mic has fallen off. My coat's popped open. You know, things like that still happen. Sheila, can I ask you a, one personal question? Depends. What is the question? <laughs> <laughs> if you could change one thing about Dennis, what would uh -oh. you change? <laughs> um, probably not so neat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, buddy, my roommate in college said the same thing. <laughs> really? Not so neat. A tidy. Well, when I first met him, he's getting a little better uh -huh. because he used to fold his pajamas at the end of the bed and everything. <laughs> that was disgusting. I've changed them. I don't have the time for it. That's fine. I mean, you know, that organization. Now, what's, what do you think his finest quality is? Uh, that he is, um, well, he's so caring and understanding with people and our family especially, so family-oriented. No question. <laughs> a question here. Hi, what do you feel is the, the degree of accuracy to which you can predict long range, range weather, you know, long range uh, For 48 <laughs> hours, I think we are 85 to 90 percent accurate. For uh, the, the next period, uh, 48 to 72 hours, it drops off a little bit. After five days, it's literally just uh, throwing a dart against the dartboard. We're getting better. I think uh, the 30-day is up to about 60% reliability, but then that's an average. We come out with the 30-day outlook and it says it's going to be colder than normal. Well, you could have the first three weeks above average, and then if the last week gets real cold, then it averaged out below normal. So is it possible, Dennis, to predict this winter? People are saying uh, it's going to be the worst winter in history, computer, too, it's going to be real mild. I think it's going to be much better than it was last winter. Your chances of getting 95 inches of snow in the bitter cold two years in a row are just astronomical. I think it'll be a normal winter, about 50 inches of snow. I hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound so mild and normal, does it? Thank you. Yeah. I'd just like to ask you, Dennis, did you always know you wanted to predict the weather for other people? Yes, I did. Uh, I grew up in South Florida and went through a couple of hurricanes, and ever since I was about seven or eight years old, I knew I wanted to be a weatherman. But it wasn't until I graduated college that I decided to go into television. Sheila, how is it being a mother of three infants? Oh, it, it's fun. It really is. Um, it's a lot of work, but every day with those kids, I learn something new. I What's the most fun. frustrating part? When they're all screaming at the same time. <laughs> I'm not home yet. Yes. <laughs> yes. What's the most rewarding part? Oh, um, well, I love the hugs and kisses. I really love that. Yeah. It's a warm feeling. Did you have twins in your family? No. This and you didn't either, Dennis? No, and the, since these are identical twins, that's a thousand to one shot to begin with, and you don't need a history for identical twins. Oh. Anybody, even you, Sharon. <laughs> even me. Right. Now that I've Anybody had a lesson watching, I'm all ready. Huh? <laughs> do, we have, do we have a message? There? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, just one more uh, thing. Uh, when they're writing the, uh, the books about people who were personalities in the Twin Cities a hundred years from now, and they write about Dennis Felkin doing the weather here, what do you really want them to say? <laughs> 